Hello strangers and friends, my name is Grace and welcome to Sometimes I Make Things, a YouTube knitting vlog podcast series that I have here. This is episode 19, which is a really exciting almost milestone for me. We're getting there, it's nice. I hope you've all been healthy and well and enjoying 2024 so far. And this episode is kind of going to be the first in a a bit of a series, I think, this year. Something I'm doing this year is a craft bingo card. So you might have seen other people doing this. I'll put what mine is up on the screen right now. And it's basically just a list of goals put in a format that if you get a streak, then maybe you give yourself a special treat or a prize. Haven't gotten to that part yet. Anyway, I made my bingo card mostly around um, pushing myself to create more um, rhythm in my practice of knitting and crafting, to try new craft techniques or um, different crafts entirely, such as sewing, which is something I've had as a goal for quite a while, or to build community in my craft sphere, such as going to um, community events and public events, and trying to downplay the consumerism side of crafting. So I don't have anything there about knit something in a certain color, which I might not have in my stash already, or go to five different local yarn stores, nothing like that. So one of the goals that I have on there is to knit every day for a month. Now, I am someone who loves knitting, but I'm not someone who's very good at doing pretty much anything consistently in my life. <laughs> so I like the idea of this one to um, see if I could build some consistency around knitting, which is something I know I enjoy, into my daily life and see if I can make that a stronger habit going forward in the year. So I thought that would be a good one to start the year with and February being the shortest month, I also thought that was a good idea. So, I mean, February is 29 days this year, so it is a long February, so I get myself some credit for that. So the plan of this video is I'm going to try to knit every single day for the month and most of the video is going to be clips of me doing just that and updates on my progress through the month, some videos of maybe what I get up to and what my animals are doing and maybe some thoughts sprinkled in along the way and then hopefully make it through the month, do all my knitting and uh, have a bit of a reflection at the end and kind of talk about if I've learned anything from this process or just what I've managed to knit or if it doesn't work out, why didn't it work out, what were the barriers for me in crafting every day. And my goal of this video is that even just for myself, I can maybe learn a little bit about my habits and how I use my hobby time or free time during what is likely to be a very busy month. I am a full-time student and I do have placement running in this month, so I'll be doing 40-hour work weeks unpaid, and I also have some assignments to do on top of that. So. Yeah, we'll see how I can manage to fit something that brings me a lot of joy into a busy schedule. And if I have any challenges, what are those challenges? So I hope you'll enjoy watching this montage vlog style video. And yeah, I'll catch you at the end. Good evening, friends. Today is February 3rd. Yes, February 3rd. And uh, so far, knitting every day, going pretty good. Um, on the 1st and the 2nd, I had my last two um, shifts of my community pharmacy placement for the program that I'm in. So it feels really good to have that done. I didn't have a lot of time knitting on those days, um, but I'm glad that I got it in. Um, on Thursday, I just like randomly woke up at 5.40 in the morning, like three hours before I needed to actually leave. And it was beautiful. I, I sat here in my nice little spot and I journaled and I did a bit of knitting and I had a tea and I just love those random early morning starts where you wake up and you're just like, oh, I could do this. 
Um, so yeah, that was a really beautiful way for me to start the month of February. I'm really happy with that. And yeah, it's been great. So this is the first Saturday of February and I've mostly just been working on my honeycomb Erin um, from the tea kettle. That's all I've done today. So I'm currently in the non-increase section. I guess this side is the better side to show that. Yes, I'm currently in the no e increases section. I finished the increases. I'll knit a little further on this and then it'll turn to the decreases section to shape the raglan. So I haven't touched that project in about a week and it feels really good to be on that. The other project I have been working on is my 2x2 two two hat to match the one that I made for Tristan last year. And this has been delightful, very easy knitting. It's just 2x2 two two rib and the yarn is very soft and it's great. So yeah, just a first couple days into February and um, you know anything could happen but I'm feeling really nice about intentionally making sure I knit at least one full round a day. So far it's been two or more and it's been nice so carry on. It's 11.30 p.m. on February 9th. I just finished an ethics assignment for school. We are heading into the weekend and I am getting my knitting for the day done. A win is a win. Hello friends, today is February 10th. It's a Saturday and I thought I would just do a little third of the way through the month check-in of what I've managed to knit so far. So let's start off with my lovely honeycomb Erin here. So what I've started doing is each week just putting a marker in and seeing how much I do in a week. So my lovely tea kettle marker there is how much knitting I did in the past week on this guy. This was actually mostly over the weekend. I had a great knitting weekend last weekend. Um, during the week, uh, usually only managing to get in at least one row a day on either of my two projects. So a little less progress, but I am very close to finishing this one. I've started my decreases there, as you can see, and I have this much yarn <laughs> left of my skein. Not a perfect little ball anymore. She's a sad sea cucumber again. I can't remember when I was knitting the first sleeve if I needed to crack into another skein to finish the sleeve or if I managed to pull it off um, with what I had here. So it's a surprise, but I am feeling stoked about this. Uh, definitely the goal for February is to finish this sleeve and cast on the ribbing of the body of the Honeycomb Erin sweater. My second knitting FO, FO, whip, <laughs> missing up my lingo here. My second whip is my hat and I've been greatly enjoying having a non-complicated knitting project to contrast with the lovely Erin over there. I didn't put a marker in, so I can't tell you how much knitting I did this week, but I started this on January 30th because I just couldn't help myself. And I think I only had about this much done. So in 10 days, I've probably done about that much ribbing, which doesn't look like that much, but for me, ribbing is a very slow project. <laughs> so I'm feeling good about that. Um, I feel like this yarn comes up slightly different in every time I take a video of it. Sometimes it's brighter, sometimes it's darker but it's really grown on me a lot. I remember when I first got this yarn, I was feeling like it wasn't quite the color I wanted, but the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm absolutely in love with it and excited about it. This is how much yarn I have left of skein one. I, I love making little hand wound um, skeins. I love my ball winder, but sometimes I just get a permanent marker and just wrap around the permanent marker like it's an Ostapin and I love it so much. <laughs> So this one is actually going to be coming with me today. I am done up to go out to Toronto for the day. Don't really have any plans, mostly just going to walk around, look at things, chitty chat with Sandra, my friend, and uh, brought the knitting along for the train ride. So we'll see where the day takes us. But 
um, feeling optimistic. February's been going really nicely so far. And what I guess I would say I've learned so far from knitting every day is one, obviously, it's very nice to make time and set time aside to do something that you enjoy, something calming. Um, I've had like early mornings where I'll have a little time to do a row or two first thing in the morning while I'm having my tea. And that's a really nice way to start the day where it's the end of a day and I'm tired. I have started a new placement. I'm in a hospital placement right now. So there's lots to learn. It's a new environment and being able to come home and just do something that I know very well and is very simple is nice. Also, as you may have noticed from the clips, it's been a nice way to spend more time with my cats. I mean, obviously I live with them. I spend a lot of time with them, but I've just noticed that when I'm intentionally sitting down to knit, they always want to come and sit with me. And I, I love my cats, but I'm also one of those people where I can get a little touched out sometimes where I don't always want cuddles. I appreciate the cats want to cuddle, but sometimes I'm like, okay, I have things to do. It's time to move. I know I'm heartless, um, but if I want, yeah, I'm knitting there, I'll like sit with them for extended times and it's just really nice. And I think it's just, it's good for the soul to have animal weight on your body and warmth and it's quiet and it's calming, good for the blood pressure. So yeah, I think overall it's just really reinforcing how healthy the knitting habit is for me um, and just good for decompressing, winding down. And uh, even if I'm feeling like I don't have time for it, I can do 10 minutes, sit down, breathe, do a row, and it makes things nicer. So I'm, I'm appreciating that. Um, yeah, let's see what the new week brings. accidentally woke up a half hour too early and rather than going back to bed I'm just gonna drink a tea and do some knitting. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Like if you color sampled the not red parts of my face, it would be the same color as the wall. <laughs> it's giving. Anyway, hello! Today is February 17th. It is Saturday and you know today has overall been a quote-unquote good day. Woke up at a good time. I've been productive with schoolwork. I talked on the phone with my boyfriend and a friend. I've eaten good food but I'm just kind of not feeling it. I've been feeling a little head empty, like thoughts, but head empty. Um, and just like kind of having trouble getting in the groove. So I'd say like before 12, my day was pretty good. And I just been kind of downward sloping. So I pulled out my knitting and I'm going to put my headphones in and I'm going to knit and watch one of my favorite podcasts. Actually, I think I'm going to watch two of my favorite podcasts. There's a new Maker Bee podcast out that I also I really enjoy and a new Fiber Fuckery that I also really enjoy. Um, so I think I'm going to watch those and just do some knitting and kind of see if I can chill a little bit and see if I feel any better. Um, I feel like this week felt busier. Like it was a good week. I had a good time. Um, but yeah, I think I've been feeling just a little, haven't had 
like I haven't had good long knitting sessions this week and I think I because I'm intentionally trying to knit every day I'm like thinking about it like oh like I feel like I haven't had time to just sit down and do my quiet little hobby this week and I think it's made me feel a little sad just because previous weeks I felt like oh look I'm doing so much this is so nice um so yeah I think having intentionality attached to my crafting has made me appreciate um when I have less time to be intentional and yeah, so I am trying to do that now, so I know I'm having a bit of a mental moment, so I'm gonna, you know, take a break. I'm almost done my assignment, I'm on track to finish it, but I'm just gonna watch some podcasts, have the headphones in, noise cancelling mode activated, I have the temperature turned up in my bedroom so I'm warm and cozy, I have a freshly brewed cup of mint tea, and we're gonna, we're gonna do some self-care. We're gonna see if that makes it better. Before I kept knitting, actually, I just wanted to, as I joined my new skein, just appreciate that this is one skein of yarn. Like, this becomes this. That's it. <laughs> like, this just feels so plump and juicy in comparison. And this is plump and juicy in its own way. But, um, yeah, it's definitely a dense knit. It's meant to be, for, it's for a hat, so dense is good. Um, but it just, it kind of makes me laugh that it's like the same height but but what happened <laughs> hello friends today is sunday february 18th and i finally have the mental fortitude to deal with this situation here so i showed it a little bit in my video from a few days ago but basically my increase rate or sorry my decrease rate for my uh, sleeve here I did wrong. So I was doing my decreases at the same rate as the increases earlier in the pattern, but I'm supposed to do like three times as many decreases. So I've got this lovely triangle of extra fabric. So I have to rip back, it's really all the way to here. Um, so basically back to my straight line point. Um, so far with this project, I haven't needed to rip anything out. So I'm a little unsure how it's gonna go. Um, I considered putting a lifeline in, but it's too hard for me to tell where the lifeline should go. So I'm kind of just planning to rip it out and I'll have a tapestry needle with some thread and just try to pick up the live stitches the best I can. I think it'll be messy, but I think it is doable. I'm just gonna have to be careful about it. So, wish me luck. <laughs> Okay, it's over now. It wasn't too bad. I managed to get it back on the needles pretty easily. It wasn't too bad. We love our non-super wash wool for that. It was not slippery at all. It was not too bad. I just need to go slowly. And this is how much yarn I have recovered. So let's get back into it. And then here are all my lovely stitch markers ready to be reattached. <laughs> but here we go. That's the <laughs> it's fine.
friends. It is kind of late on February 23rd. I have finished an assignment and I do have another 7.30 a.m. shift tomorrow. So I have an early start that I have to do. Um, not my favorite combination, but I'm still going to do my knitting today because I said I would do it. Um, so yeah, I'm just doing a purl row here, making progress on my decreases. I have a week off. The last week of February is going to be off for me. It's my reading week for school, so that's really nice. And I'm really looking forward to just sleeping as much as I need to, doing some fun little trips, and doing a lot of knitting. That's that's really what I'm looking forward to the most, I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, this is how much I have left of my skein, so progress. It's been a good month so far. I'm just very tired. It's Monday, February 26th. My engagement week has started and I am going to get this section done today. Well, if you can't tell from the big smile on my face, I am absolutely thrilled. This feels like such a huge accomplishment to have made these two sleeves. Um, I am totally blanking on when I started these, but I'm pretty sure the first one I started in April of last year. So it's it feels so nice to have them in the world and be here. Um, when I hold them up, they match very nicely together. So that's exciting as well. Um, looks like I made them symmetrical, so we love that. Um, yeah, achievement unlocked. So for sleeve number two, um, since February started, I've knit from our friend the tea kettle here. So from about here up, that's what I have knit in the month of February. Uh, not gonna lie, I forgot that the tea kettle was where I started. There's another marker that was down here and I thought that was where I had started. Nope, nope, I've only knit from the tea kettle, which considering I had to rip back basically a whole section, Good enough, good enough. Um, yeah, so there it is. It's just, oh, I love it so much. So next step for these lovely, lovely sleeves is I am going to block them. So I'll throw them in some water. I'm gonna pin them out, stretch them out. I am planning on aggressively blocking this because I'm, I didn't make a size with a ton of wiggle room. I made a size that was pretty close to the fit of my body, um, but I'm just really hoping I can stretch it out so that that works for me. We're working with some limited yarn quantities, doing what I can. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to block these because I'm very curious to see how the cables look before blocking versus after blocking, because to my understanding, cables bloom a lot and uh, open up a lot after blocking. And I haven't done a lot of cable knitting, so it's a bit all new to me. So I am excited to see where this goes. Good vibes all around. Progress, progress, progress. 
As far as next step for the sweater, it would be to cast on either the front or the back, not sure which one I want to do first. Um, each of these took about one full skein, um, give or take, a little bit more than a full skein. And I have two skeins left each for the front and the back. Hey, my my. <laughs> I have two skeins each left to do uh, the front and back each. So I'm just hoping I'm not going to run out of yarn. I probably will, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'm not going to cast on right away though for the next part of this sweater because I have my dad's kiwi sweater that I still have to finish. So that's going to be the next thing that I pick up on. Um, and I've got some just other things that I want to work on. So I'm not planning on taking a long break from this pattern, but I am not sure if I'll be working on it in March. If I put it like that, maybe around my birthday in April, I'll cast on again and make some progress on it. So I know this is a long-term whip for me. I am fully settled in that as a reality. I am not trying to rush making this, but it feels so good to have those two sleeves done. Riding the high. <laughs> you're still here. I hope you enjoyed hanging out in February with me. I thought uh, it would be nice to do a little what I have learned through this experience just to kind of reflect on the past month and what I learned and what I thought about the experience overall. So to help me out I have my lovely knitting book here. I actually just added this cute little hedgehog sticker that I got off Redbubble to it today. I think it really adds to it. <laughs> I find it helpful to write things down. There's online platforms that you can use, but there's something about having a physical copy that really speaks to me. So this is our reference here. Ignore things falling out of it. I will deal with that later. So overall, we did it. Knit every day for a month. I think this is the first time I've made a challenge video on this YouTube channel and I've actually completed the challenge. So how's that for growth in 2024? I would say overall, I really did enjoy it. I find I'm someone who I do kind of struggle with daily routines and like sticking to something and doing it every day. I'm much more of a sporadic person. So I did wonder if I'd be able to stick to this every day, but I found that um, filming the little clips that you have watched was really helpful for keeping me accountable. There were some days where I definitely was doing my knitting kind of last minute, 11 p.m., etc. I There's only really one day that I remember feeling like I'm tired and I don't want to do this and I just knit a row of my hat and done is done. Um, for the course of the month I only counted knitting a full row as being a knit day which um, I think it was helpful having a smaller project like the 2x2 two two hat here. It's 112 stitches, I think, so that was really reasonable. Um, and then this one is less stitches, but it's a complicated project with cables, so that was more of my challenge knit. Um, but I'm really happy with the progress I made on both of these. And finishing a ribbed hat? Hell yeah, I've been wearing this a lot and really liking it, so I'm happy with that. So, as far as the notes that I made, I mentioned this earlier on in one of my thought sections, but I found that 
having more intentionality was actually really good for me. And the conclusion I came to is that it's not so much that knitting is a stress relief for me, but it's making time and having space for knitting that is. So I found that through needing to keep track of my knitting this month, I was able to notice more when I was feeling hurried or rushed or busy or stressed and like not feeling like I had time to stop and knit and enforcing the time to stop and do something slowly was really good for my mental health. And I feel like there could be any number of tasks that would have that same effect, but having intentional rest and intentional creativity built into my day was really nice for me and I think that that's a lesson that I'm going to reflect on a bit more and see if I can find a way to incorporate it in a more unstructured way. So for example, it doesn't need to be that I knit every single day, but maybe I need to have some sort of check mark, benchmark of this is something you need to do for yourself every day that involves intentional rest time and space for yourself. The other point I'd like to make just in general, kind of related to the fact this is the first challenge I've completed, is that this actually did give me a good confidence boost. We're like, oh, I actually can achieve something if I set my mind to it, isn't that interesting? Obviously I've done that before in the past, but when it comes to something like this, it was like, oh, that's nice. Another thing that I learned from this month related to knitting specifically, is that knitting one row doesn't feel like a lot of progress, but it adds up. Like even if I had only knit one row every single day, that would have meant 29 rows. That's more than none. So um, I think in the moment it kind of felt like, oh, this isn't really achieving anything. But now at the end of the month, I can look and see like, oh, I finished this sleeve and I finished this hat and I've picked up and I've been working on the fleuret socks here, um, which I haven't touched in months. I tend to be a slow sock knitter. Um, but I got the heel flap, the gusset, and some progress started on the foot. That's great! This is more knitting than I probably would have done otherwise just because I was encouraging myself just do something. And just do something leads to something in the end. So that's just a good reminder to have in general. The other thing that I have learned, which is kind of funny, is that even when I am doing it on purpose, I'm not really good at car knitting and I'm not really good at knitting on my lunch breaks. <laughs> Which like I, I was always bringing my knitting with me so if I had time I could get that row done. But like sometimes I would knit on my break and sometimes in the car when I was a passenger, obviously. Um, but yeah, I just, it's not a go-to for me. I think that it's just like on a lunch break I'm just trying to veg and like having knitting out it feels too rushed and like there's too much pulled out and I can't just drop it and go back. It kind of takes up time. And then in the car, I think sometimes it makes me feel a little car sick. So I will always continue to bring my knitting around with me, but I think I feel like I have some stats now that tell me, you tried a lot and it didn't work out very often. So I think for me, knitting really does need to be, I'm at home, I'm comfortable, or I'm waiting somewhere, I'm on a train, like those, those are all good times for me to knit, but I shouldn't expect myself to actually knit in the car. I think it makes me sick. <laughs> in conclusion, I'm really happy that I did this project. I don't know if this YouTube video is gonna be very watchable or uh, if there'll be any interest in it, but I think just the process of making the video to go along with this helped me overall, and I'm glad that I ended up achieving what I did achieve and I feel like I've learned some good things about routines and hobbies for myself. I don't necessarily think I'll stick to knitting every single day. I mean, it's March now and I have not been knitting every single day, but I am, I feel like this was a really good start to the year and I do feel like it gave me a good mojo boost. Like I think I'm thinking about knitting a lot. I mean, I'm always thinking about knitting, let's be honest, but I just feel like it's gotten me excited about knitting and excited about making and kept that feeling going. So overall, this was a great experience. 10 out of 10, positivity, we love it. I hope that you have enjoyed this process video and watching it um, and you know, let me know what you think. If you have any comments, feel free to comment. Um, but all in all, cheers, take good care of yourself. Happy March. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye friends.